So how are we doing there, buddy? Well, it's a busy day here at Moss Mountain Farm. I have to say every day is a busy day here. Today we're gonna to talk about one of my great loves and that is heritage poultry. As many of you may know, we're very interested in supporting these old heritage breeds. What's a heritage breed? Well, they're really any land race breed that you may have seen from the past that were a part of most countries around the world. And today we're gonna to be talking about a very special breed from Switzerland. It's the Appenzeller Spitzhaben. Not just an Appenzeller Spitzhaben, but the silver spangled variety. That's a variety that we raise right here at Moss Mountain Farm. Now let's go back to the conservancy for just a moment. One of our goals is to raise awareness about so many of the breeds that are threatened, threatened by extinction, because we don't have as many breeders of flocks of these as we used to have, particularly large fowl. What do I mean by large fowl? Well, in chickens, you can get large birds, um, typically large fowl, like a Plymouth Rock, can also come in the form of a bantam. And we're really not focused so much on bantams here, although we have a few, but it's the large fowl that are the most threatened. And the reason for this is it takes more room to raise them. They eat more. Um, and we just have fewer breeders that are focusing on these wonderful old breeds that have been a part of human existence for time immemorial. So let's get back to the silver spangled Spitzhaben. Now, they come from Switzerland, from the northeast corner of Switzerland, Appenzell, uh, hence the name Appenzeller. And this particular variety is called the Silver Spangled. And he's called that because of the spangling that you see, basically a white bird where every feather is tipped with a black spangle, which makes them extraordinarily striking as a flock. We keep three flocks of these, three different genetic pools of silver spangled Appenzell or Spitzhavens. Now that's a mouthful, right? And these are beautiful birds in that they're striking with their polka dots. If these birds were a dog, they'd be a Dalmatian. Um, and what's interesting about them is their crest. And you can see um, that this rooster has a crest that is forward with its plumage. The plumage is arcing forward. And this is an important quality of this particular breed. All of these heritage breeds have qualities and we're gonna go through many of these breeds over time and introduce you to them. And hopefully you'll be inspired to be able to keep a flock of heritage birds yourself. Now, what I love about the silver spangled Appenzeller or the Spitzhabens in general is that they're actually very calm. They make a great flock bird. Uh, they tend to like to forage. They're very good at taking care of themselves and they're not the kind of bird that you would want to keep in confinement. Now we've got some of these in display here uh, on the show today and you can see that they have this beautiful white background with the spots all over them. So they are quite striking, but they really don't like to be confined. They like to be loose, free ranging, uh, they're very good foragers and actually very good layers. Now, a lot of people think that because they're a relatively small bird, uh, the hens will weigh three to four pounds, the roosters will weigh five to six pounds, that they're like a leghorn type where they might be a little skittish, a little jumpy, but these actually aren't, they're very calm. And that's one of the things that I like about them. So if you have a few acres, and you have an opportunity for these to roam freely, this is a great bird that forages well, as I've already mentioned. Here at Moss Mountain Farm, in our, what we call the poultry palace, is that we have 24 units where we have eight foot interior spaces for these birds to roost, lay eggs, and be put to bed at night, if you will. And then they have a 50 by eight run. So our Appenzeller Spitzhabens have an opportunity to get out there and forage every day, which is something they really enjoy doing. So why don't we take a little closer look and let me describe uh, what a very good rooster might look like. Now I have to say that we follow the, um, the idea of the American Poultry Association standard of perfection, which means one aspires to perfection, 
one doesn't ever actually achieve it. So it's always a process of improving whatever breed you're working on. Now, while the Appenzellers Spitzhabens are not recognized by the American Poultry Association, but there are a lot of breeders out there that would like to see them recognized. And when they're recognized, that means that you can take them to an APA, an American Poultry Association certified uh, or sanctioned show, and they can be judged uh, in their own class. The beauty of these birds really to me comes in this polka dot uh, that pattern that you see on them. You can see as I spread the wings, virtually every feather is white with a spangle on the end of it. Now what we look for in this is that pure white color. We look for those dark spangles where every feather is spangled. If you look at the crest and the head, the crest is supposed to move forward. With the males, we like a white crest. Uh, he has a nice strong head. If you look closely, at his um, comb. He has a V-shaped comb with a little bit of a horn right here on the tip. Uh, the wattles should be smooth, and for the most part his are, and the earlobes are oval in shape with a slight pale blue color to them, which makes it a very striking addition to the makeup of this bird. Um, if you look at the tail, you can see the tail angle with this bird is not at a 90 degree which is something we've been working on here at Moss Mountain Farm. We're trying to get the tail to relax just a little bit and not stand up straight. The other thing we're working on is we're trying to get some of the gray, um, or if you look in here, you can see the sooty kind of color that you see in the white. We're trying to clean that up. And the way you do that is you choose male birds and females that have cleaner, whiter tails. And each year, as you breed them, uh, hopefully what you will get are offspring that will begin to look like their parents and you'll begin to do away with some of that uh, moldy sort of soot that you see here. Um, the tail on the males is very beautiful. You can see he has a sickle-like tail. He's just coming through a molt. And then you can see these are the hackle feathers here on the side, which indicates a male bird, these beautiful striking thin feathers that come off the backside of the, of the bird. Now, this is definitely an older male. You can see if you look at his legs, he has a long spur on them. These spurs are about an inch long. They can get much longer. Um, and if you look at the color of the leg, the leg is a very nice gray color. When these birds are judged, they are looked over from top to bottom. The bottoms of the feet, the color of the legs, the color of the eyes, the earlobes, every aspect of the bird is judged. So this is a really handsome male. We've been using him now for two seasons. And next what I wanna do is show you a cockerel that um, actually demonstrates some of the progress that we've been making with these Appenzell or Spitzhaben. So let me put this little guy away. All right, now I have the cockerel. This bird is, is young. And if we look at the leg, you can tell we really don't have those long spurs. You can just see the nubs here, which will eventually grow into the spurs. And notice he has two black bands on his leg. This is just one of the ways that we use to follow um, our, the parentage, if you will, and the age of birds. So it's a very simple device. We just take zip ties and what two black bands on the right leg indicate is that this is a bird that was hatched last year. So each year we have a color coding system that helps us identify the age of the birds. Here at Moss Mountain Farm, we have 55 breeds of heritage poultry. So you can imagine it takes a lot to keep up with uh, the age of the birds, um, which bloodlines they come from, and so forth, and particularly during the hatching season, this becomes extremely important. I mentioned earlier that we have three pins of Appenzeller Spitzhabens. Uh, these come from uh, roughly three different lines of Spitzhabens that we have gathered here at the farm. It's very important that we keep genetic diversity at the top of the list because with that diversity comes vigor and strength and that's what we're looking for with these birds to keep them vital uh, as they move forward in the future. 
Now, if, when one looks at this cockerel, you'll see some improvements from the father or grandfather in this case. If we look at his head, you can see he has that beautiful white crest that's arcing forward. Um, I think his wattles are much smoother, which is better. Uh, you can see those oval blue earlobes. But what's really striking about this bird is you have that V comb, which is much stronger, and that little horn, that little rhino-like horn on the front, just above the beak, is actually much stronger on this bird, which I like. He, he has the, the dark eyes that we're looking for. He has the gray legs we're looking for. And if we look back here at the tail, the tail is actually a little whiter. So I'm very excited about this. You can still see a little bit of this soot um, in the feathering, but each of the tips of the feathers have a spangle on it. So we're definitely making progress here in the color department. Now, when you're raising birds, one of the things you need to keep in mind, and it's often said by the old time breeders, is that you first want to get the type right, the confirmation of the bird, what it looks like. And that's called building the house. You want to get the house built before you paint the house which is the plumage of the bird, all right? So as we improve them, we wanna make sure we've got the body type right, and all of these birds have a particular body type. And if we look closely here at the British standard, this is what we're going by. The British actually recognize the Appenzeller Spitzhaben as a recognized breed. And so I use my British standard I bring it out here, and when we're setting up our breeding pens, we actually go through and pull the standard out and judge the birds, just as though they are at a show, and pick out the best females and the best males. Now, what we're gonna see with this male is that he has fewer spangles on his breast. He's a little lighter on the breast than the previous male we saw. And so what we'll do with him is we've paired him with darker females, females that have more spangling on their breast with the hope that the progeny, the F1 generation from this cross will then uh, balance out and we'll get offspring that have a little more of a balance. But this little cockerel has so much going for him. Uh, we're very excited about having him in our in our breeding pen. What we typically like to do is we like to, to choose one male, a cockerel, that we'll place with, depending on how many females we have that we feel like are up to standard, um, I'll take a, as many as maybe eight or nine females for one cockbird or cockerel to, to cover. Okay, now let's talk about the females. Um, this is actually a, a hen uh, and not a pullet. Now the difference between a hen and a pullet is that, a, excuse me, madam, all right, there you go, I see, um, is that a hen is a female chicken over one year old, a pullet is a female under one year old. And this is definitely a hen, she's got a full body, uh, she's coming right up to the standard size of that three to four pounds, which is what the standard looks for. And um, if you look at a bird like this, you'll see that she has a lot more in the way of spangles on her breast. She's a darker bird. And that's why we have her with this younger cockerel that uh, is lighter. I'm just gonna hold her a little closer like, like this and you can see they begin to calm down just a little bit. You're all right there? Yeah, you gonna sing to me? And if we look at the crest and the females, the crest is darker. With our males, we saw a white crest. With the females, you get a little darker crest on those. And uh, they too, the crests are beginning to arc forward. This is something we're working on. As we choose birds each year for the breeding pens, we're looking for that crest to arc forward. I have to tell you, when we first started with these Appenzell or Spitzhabens, their crests were just out of control. It looked as though maybe some Polish had been uh, bred into them. If you know poultry, you know that the Polish have great crests or, or top knots on them that can get kind of wild and wacky. And what you want with a silver spangled Appenzell or Spitzhaben or Spitzhabens in general is a very cropped uh, and tailored crest on them. Um, <clears throat> these are actually named for 
uh, hats worn by Swiss women uh, in the 17th and 18th centuries called hobbins. As you can see, there's a lot of time that goes into perfecting these fowl and getting them back to what they are meant to look like, what they look like in the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. And it's important to me that we, we conserve the genetics of these birds. And one of the ways to do this, which makes it really great fun, is that you can join a poultry club. There's actually a, a Spitzhaben club that you can join. Um, and you can get to know other people who have interest in that breed. And you can begin to connect with some of those people. And that's what I've done over the past six or seven years that we've kept this breed here at Moss Mountain Farm. And over the course of that time, you really learn to um, get to know some folks. They become very good friends. You trade birds and eggs back and forth. And uh, you work together to build the breed. Uh, it's all in the name of, of really trying to conserve these, these beautiful animals. Now, one of the things that we've done here is over the course of time, um, I've actually brought in three different bloodlines. And one particular friend of mine who lives in Texas uh, does a wonderful job with this. She comes up every year and looks at the birds with me and we work on the breeding pens. So it's a little project that we do together. So it's uh, one of the little lanyaps or extras you get when you begin to get involved with different breeds of livestock and poultry. Okay, so let's take this hen uh, and let's put her back in the cage. And I wanna talk a little bit about egg production because they're very good at egg production. All right, excuse me, madam. Appenzell or Spitzhabens are not a commercial breed, obviously. Uh, if you look at commercial layers, you're gonna get um, maybe 350 maybe eggs a year, that's one a day. It's really quite remarkable what the industry has done uh, to uh, uh, up production with these animals. Um, I prefer the heritage breeds. They don't produce as many eggs, uh, but they certainly add a lot of beauty and joy to life. What I've done here this morning is I've actually gathered a few eggs to show you the size of the eggs. So what I have here are three Spitzhaben eggs and you can see that two of them are a pretty good size egg. They would be considered a, a medium egg uh, in the grocery store uh, and there's one much smaller. Now typically what you find is that the younger birds, the pullets when they first begin to lay, the eggs are small. Often they're tiny, almost bantam size, meaning sort of the miniature chicken size. But um, as they mature, the eggs often become larger. Now, a lot of people ask, uh, do, do you have to have a rooster for the hen to lay eggs? Absolutely not. The females will ovulate without having a male around, uh, but they will produce eggs that are not fertile. So you have to have a male to produce fertile eggs. And what we do is we gather these eggs every day and we mark them based on the pen from which they came and we place them in an egg room uh, until we're ready to set them in the incubator. And there they incubate for 21 days at about 99.9 .9 degrees uh, with about 50% humidity. And in 21 days that embryo will develop. About on the seventh day, we will candle the eggs and we will look and see if those eggs are fertile. And if we begin to see a pattern where from that pen, the eggs are not fertile, that tells us the male is not doing what he needs to be doing. And so we'll switch out a male and see if that helps the situation. Because what we like to do here is produce as many of a breed as we possibly can. You produce as many as you can and you look at them at adults or near adult birds and you choose the very best few to breed with the next year and that's how you make improvements. Appenzellers will probably lay um, I'm thinking maybe 200 eggs a year. Um, we find ours to be very regular layers particularly during the winter. Let's just think about where they're from Switzerland so these birds are very good at climbing mountains and used to cold temperatures. The small combs that they have keep those combs from being vulnerable to cold weather. And the birds are used to laying when there's low light 
and there is uh, their cold temperatures. So that's one of the advantages of having this breed is because we found that they lay particularly well during the winter. Now I wanna go back just a moment and talk about uh, the standard of perfection, even though the silver spangled Appenzeller Spitzhaven isn't in the standard. Um, and then we're gonna talk about baby chicks and I wanna show you some little Appenzeller Spitzhaven chicks. Uh, this is a 1949 copy of the Standard of Perfection. The American Poultry Association was established in 1873. And um, what you can see here, these are silver laced Wyandots, uh, which is a great old American breed. Uh, if you look, you can see they're beautifully laced. Uh, and what you find here is all of the specifications, the standards, if you will, that these birds need to look like to be uh, up to what they were uh, really bred to become. And this is what an APA licensed judge will use this book as they go through and they look at a show in an exhibition situation and identify the winners, the ones that come the closest to the standard of perfection. Now, our hope is that the silver spangled Appenzeller will one day make it into the American standard of perfection, and it's just a matter of time, and it depends on folks such as yourself who might take on this breed, improve them, and work together with a club to get enough of them showing at these shows to really be recognized. All right, so why don't we take a look at some one-day-old chicks that have just hatched they're absolutely adorable. What I find about these birds is that they make a beautiful flock. Um, seeing one variety all together, uh, I think is a stunning visual statement. All right, so we've talked enough about the, the adults and how striking they are, but I have to tell you, the little chicks are absolutely adorable and will steal your heart. Now these are adorable little Appenzeller Spitzhaben chicks. They're kind of a smoky gray color. Uh, these are only about a week old. Um, you can see that they've already produced some tiny little wing feathers um, that, are, that are largely white. But what indicates these as being Spitzhabens is you've got that classic gray leg. And right at the top, you can see just a little bit of a bump, which is that little crest that we see, just a little rise there above the little guy. Now, these grow very quickly. Um, as you can see, out of an egg where they incubated for only 21 days, a day old chick, these are a week old and they're already looking great and feathering out beautifully. All right, now let's take a look at some that are only about two months old and you can see just how quickly they grow. Undeniably a Spitzhaben, the crest is very much arcing forward. Uh, you have the, the Dalmatian spots coming along very nicely. Uh, this is very much a juvenile, juvenile bird, so we're gonna have to wait and see how the plumage comes along. This is gonna be a little female, a little pullet, and um, just because of her size based on the others, the roosters at this point are the little males, the cockerels, will have stronger wattles that'll be showing red uh, much more than the little females. We've got that classic gray leg, which is so beautiful. And it's just hard to believe that this little bird is only two months old. They'll begin laying at about eight months old, eight to nine months old, depending on the time of year. And uh, we can usually get two generations every 18 months out of them. So that's how we continue to make improvements on the breed. If you're interested in small farming, to me, one of the great joys is doing something for the overall good, such as conservation. There's so many breeds of livestock out there, whether they're horses, pigs, goats, sheep, you name it, and certainly poultry that can use the support of very good breeders. So look into some of these organizations that are focused on conservation, such as the Heritage Poultry Conservancy. Come visit us here at Moss Mountain and see some of the breeds that we have. And also join some of the other organizations that are out there. The Livestock Conservancy that's based in Hillsborough, North Carolina. It's a great one to join here in America. 
Also, the Society for the Preservation of Poultry Antiquities is another. And then I'm a member of the Rare Breed Survival Trust in England, and they're very dedicated to the conservation of old British breeds of livestock and poultry. I also want to encourage everyone who raises poultry to follow very strict biosecurity practices. Best practices in taking care of your animals will cut down on disease. Our flock is NPIP certified. It's a government program where your birds are blood tested and I encourage all flock owners to be a part of that program. Now, if you'd like to know more about some of these heritage breeds, we have a complete playlist of the breeds that we keep here at Moss Mountain Farm. We're always interviewing experts in the various breeds. We have poultry judges, poultry scientists coming on board and helping us with our flock here at Moss Mountain Farm. So I hope you'll check out some of our other videos, like them and subscribe to our channel and come see us here at Moss Mountain Farm. And check out some of these little guys, right? How you doing there? Hey, if you like this video, comment below and subscribe to my channel.